Hello everyone, I'm Paavo Järvi, the music director of Tornhalle Orchestra Zurich. Welcome to Tram for Two, a new series where I take my guests on a ride through Zurich. Welcome to another episode of Tram for Two. My guest this week is Antoine Tanesti. Well, how often do you take public transportation? No, I do that. I took tramways before and I, I love but actually... Is it something you do yes. often? Or is and as a Parisian, I was born in Paris. Somehow it's part of my blood. Tell me, um, when was the last time we played together? Remember? I think the last time was October 2015. That's right. So that was that's a long time ago. That's long time ago. Too long ago. Sorry. You travel with your viola all the time, and this is not a viola joke yet. Not yet. But do you have any issues with bringing it on the board? No, of course. It's all a question of how I see it. I can see it as a what it is, which is a work of art. It's a Stradivarius. It's a Stradivari viola from 1672. It's 350 years old. You could compare it to a Da Vinci painting or something like this. But it is also my work tool. Do I have to care how to transport it? Do you have any security? No, I, I used to be very scared the first couple of years. Mm -hmm. But I felt I can't go on like this. I can't have a heart attack every, every time. time because I'm considering its value. I tried to, it became a habit for me to care about it for its value. If people would see what I do, they would feel that I'm completely crazy. I'm a maniac of cleanliness, of humidity, of checking this and that, bringing it to the violin maker to check. But it's part of the habit you have to get into. But otherwise, then when I play and also when I travel, it has to be practical. You are spending a lot of time in hotels, of course. And earlier we had a discussion about your realization of the size matters, so to speak. <laughs> now let's get, let's get serious here. Does size matter in, in general? <laughs> well, as a viola player, size obviously matters. The comment that I get most after concerts when people come to see me backstage is, oh, I thought you were much taller, actually. <laughs> Yeah, but the stage, the stage makes everything, everything bigger, I mean. Exactly. First thing I noticed that you lost a lot of weight and you're in really good shape. Do you go to the gym? Well, how do you I don't go to the in, gym. In, My in new thing is Pilates and I'm a lover of food. But I had to find and I think probably everybody should find the right balance for them. And I'm searching for that at the moment. So I've reduced the amount of meat and fish and proteins, and I eat much more vegetables, much more fruits, and I feel healthier. I feel more energized, actually. And the other thing I had to find is we are often in social situations as musicians, and alcohol, wine, I particularly like wine, comes, can come often. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you don't necessarily want or need right. alcohol on a daily basis. Do you limit wine before the concert? Like 30 if minutes it's... before the concert? No. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, but for example, if I'm on tour and there are concerts every day, I'm going to have an eye out for how much alcohol every day. Because I, I have soloists, uh, famous soloists uh, who who I know exactly that they don't drink here, here they don't go out, here they have a one day bef off after that, that night they will have a glass of wine. It is, it is so well balanced because they know the effect of, of, of what it takes. Yeah. Do you teach? Yes. Because there are some people who just say, I don't teach because it's not my thing. I love teaching. I love seeing in young people such an inspiration that gives me energy, that gives me ideas, and do also... Do you scream at your students? No, so except when I teach the screen. How many times do I have to tell you? <laughs> no, but what I love to see is that mostly we often have the same problems. Either they have problems that I had or that I have at the moment. 
or that I will have. And so they highlight your own issues. Yes. yes. But you know, this is what I always uh, also notice that when I teach, and I love teaching, and I have a, you know master classes, but also in the summer I have an academy in, in Estonia in Perno, and and I always find that it kind of um, it's a cleansing kind of experience because when you tell somebody that okay keep an eye on this and you, this is a bad habit or this is something you shouldn't be doing and you think wait a minute am I doing this am I doing the same thing so and then you conduct a rehearsal or a concert and you have a all the whole row of conductors sitting there and I'm <laughs> thinking like better better do what I preach you know because I had it kind exactly. of makes you seriously clean up your own act so much non-verbal communication in music and then in teaching you have to put words. You have to articulate them. And say, okay, we do it like this, but already this is reductive. But at the same time, it's so interesting to find the right words. Now I want to ask you something very serious uh, for a second. Um, viola jokes. Have you ever been offended ever? when somebody had the viola jokes. We know there's a whole genre. I could not love it more, and I love it more and more, and I try to remember all of them. Give me a one short viola joke. Well, a string quartet that ends up on an island without anything, and they find a, a magic lamp, and so they clean the lamp, and the genie comes out, and he grants one wish to each of them. And the first violin says, he actually doesn't want to play string quartet, he wants to become a soloist. And the genie says, no problem, and he disappears and becomes a world-famous soloist. Second violinist says, he never wanted to be second violin, he wanted to be first violin. The genie clicks his fingers, he disappears, becomes first violin of the best string quartet in the world. Cellist says, he never wanted to play even the cello, he wanted to be a conductor. Genie clicks his finger and the cellist disappears and becomes the world most famous best conductor. And the viola player stays alone on the island and the genie says, what would you like? And the viola player doesn't know. And he says, I don't know what I want. I guess I just feel lonely. So I would like my friends to come back. And the genie says, okay. And they're all back. <laughs> See, this is the personality of the viola player. Sad In a way, lonely. so sad and lonely, but needs the others. I have some worse viola jokes. Uh, this, was, this was a specifically a clean one. I have actually noticed that viola players are the ones who, who are the best viola joke tellers and the ones who even create these websites and yes. all kind of portals where the specific, yes. but they're all done by viola, viola players. Thank you, Antoine, for joining us on this tram for two. Yes. And please join us and subscribe to our Don Halle YouTube channel.